30 plus out of place and out of time animals in the ancient Americas that expound Genesis and confound science. Evidence that proves the biblical account reliable and macro evolution deniable. By Chris Parker, Saint.com. I'm Terrence P. We are having a little bit of a sense of humor about the title, but we think we are going to be able to show some interesting things about 30 plus animals that should have been extinct according to current science paradigm, according to evolutionary theory, but that are not. What we're not going to show in this video is um, the um, Inca stones or the Occam Barrel figurines. I think those are well known. There's probably 60 or 70,000 pretty solid artifacts that prove that dinosaurs and men didn't, didn't interact, but we won't be uh, looking at those in this video. The slideshow for this will be available at saint.com backslash WordPress with a capital W and a capital P in WordPress, one word. Uh, so you'll be able to look at this at your leisure. I'm just going to try to do 30 slides in 15 minutes. Let's go. Just to backtrack a little bit, two basic views of life on Earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the Earth. And he created every living thing at one time, not more than 10,000 years ago, or universal descent of all organisms through a common ancestor by natural selection or other means. Um, there are some implications of these two theories that um, there's very many, but just a couple. Uh, from the biblical view, all creatures, including dinosaurs, did interact with man and uh, did live at the same time. And there wouldn't be any evidence of evolution uh, no exist, no evidence of uh, descent. And on the other side, you'd expect to see from the evolutionary standpoint, stratification of creatures from simple to complex. You'd see no evidence of dinosaurs and man ever, ever, ever interacting. And uh, you'd see some evidence in the form of transitional fossils, which Darwin himself expected to see. The one th thing that uh, Stephen Jay Gould is famous for saying, at least famous among evolution uh, creationists, for saying that transitional fossils and the lack thereof was a trade secret of paleontology. Uh, evolutionists hate that. But uh, one famous evolutionist, Colin pa Patterson, who wrote the book Evolution, a seminal book I'm sure, um, noted that it was hard to contradict Gould and the American Museum people when they said there were no transitional fossils. And uh, of course that's what Gould and the American Museum people were saying and that led to theories like hopeful monsters and punctuated equilibrium. So let's go to the videotape. Well, I'm not quite ready to go to the videotape. One thing we saw, one th thing we thought when we came to the internet was sort of like a, a museum, the unfettered museum, and you'd have um, a look at ancient evidence. And what we'd expect as Christians is to see evidence in ancient art of dinosaurs and those types of animals, just like we see evidence of cows and sheep, probably not as prevalent. Uh, because those animals weren't as prevalent, also because those kind of uh, discoveries don't seem to make it to the top in a world, in a scientific world that says that couldn't happen. Those things aren't um, easy to find. Also should note that there are hundreds, literally hundreds, that we know of in the fossil record of creatures who, according to science, have been unchanged. In other words, have not evolved over 100 million years plus. So these are things to note, but let's now go to the videotape and look at some of these creatures. This, we believe, is a Toxodon. There's some information there about uh, where it's from. It is a uh, pre-Columbian artifact. It shows a priest, uh, and I'm using finger quotes, um, either giving a bath to or preparing an animal for perhaps sacrifice, and quite clearly um, it looks just like a Toxodon. And in the absence of that as an identification, it would be difficult to come up with a counter-identification. And those animals, uh, as you can see here, were, according to science, extinct between 16,500 and 2.6 million years ago. Now this, I sure we have no uh, Angor Wat Temple Stegosaurus, which evolutionists tried to claim, no, it's not a Stegosaurus, that's just leaves. Uh, that are backgrounding the animal that make it look like a stegosaurus or somewhat like a stegosaurus. This is quite clearly, the top left, a pliosaurus. Now, plesiosaurs, all of them, have four fins, an elongated neck, and a shortened tail. And this one quite clearly does. I mean, the shape is very easy to make out. Here we have it on the right compared with 
a pliosaur, and the pliosaurs were the plesiosaurs uh, with the shorter necks. And they may have other slight differences, but it's very readily identifiable as a plesiosaur, and there's no mistake. And these were found in a grave near Machu Picchu in Ecuador, and there's some information there. It was in National Geographic magazine, January, June edition, 1915, I'm sorry. This is a mound builder, mound builder culture, and now we're gonna, I'm going to identify this as an example of a sauropod. There are many types. Um, now, in the absence of, you know, if you don't agree with that, then what does it represent? A myth mythological animal would be the case, or a grotesque, a name that science used through the ages to identify something that was unidentifiable, a monster, grotesque. So we think it's a stylized sauropod, and here's some evidence of that. This creature existed by itself in this one piece by itself. Perhaps we wouldn't make this identification, but if you can look at the heads of this, this is from China, from Warring States period, um, and you can you see this is the Warring States. This is also from China, um, from the Zhao culture, from 774 to 46 BC. But if you look carefully, if you notice the head appendages and the teeth, these are all quite clearly representations of the same creature. Uh, one from the Mound Builder culture in, in ancient North America and these other two from ancient China. Megatherium, uh, supposedly extinct between 10,000 and 2 million years ago. There's been recent, as uh, William Corliss and Frontiers Online mentions, recent evidence, recent eyewitness accounts um, in South America of people seeing a giant sloth-like animal. And it's clear from this piece, from a pre-Columbian piece, it's made of jade. Um, it's got a certificate of this authenticity in respect to the fact that it's a piece of jade from pre-Columbian culture and uh, they identify this animal or this person here or creature here as a monkey but you can see having flipped him over got shoes on this is a uh, a man digging with uh, unhappily with a megatherium this is identified as a Kalima vessel in the form of a dog with a turtle shell so apparently the Kalima culture which was made very, very accurate representations of other animals, for some reason decided to make a dog in a turtle shell. Uh, we see something else in it. This appears to be a glyptodont, which was supposedly, supposedly extinct between 15,000 and 2 million years ago. However, uh, if you can see, this is also a piece of somewhat ancient art from the 18th century, Dogon culture in Africa, West Africa. And as you can see, these two pieces are very similar, and they're also very similar to... Um, glyptodonts. There are hundreds of types, or that's probably the, there are a number of types of glyptodonts, and I think that is the animal that's being represented here. Perhaps you would like to hold to the dog in a turtle shell, but this is what we see. This one's really quite clear. If you have a problem with this, again, there's no leaves behind this animal that are obscuring what it really is. This is an enchilosaur or a notosaur. Notosaur is basically an enchilosaur without the club tail. And that could be just sexual dimorphism. It could be that the male had the club and the, woman did, the female did not. Or it could be species difference amongst the ankylosaurs. But this quite clearly, from the different views, this is a modern drawing or modern sculpture or interpretation of what we think an ankylosaur looked like. And you can quite see from the various angles that this is what this represents. This is a creature that was supposedly extinct 65 million years ago. And it comes from the Kalima culture, from which has supposedly lasted 100 BC to AD 250. These are other pictures or other representations of uh, Enchilosaur. This is from Africa, right here. This is the, a monster called the Tarasque from Europe, um, and you know it existed in various supposedly mythological accounts of simply encounters with men. It wasn't doing anything magical; it was just encountering men. And it was a monster that they tried to kill. And as you can see, with these photos down here in the bottom right, bears a very strong resemblance to Enchilosaur. This is, these are several of the hadrosaur dinosaurs, hadrosaurs. Uh, not all hadrosaurs had headgear or crests, but some of the more well-known ones did. Lambiosaurus, Parasaurus volupus, Corythosaurus on the top left. Uh, so, um, these are again almost as well known as seropods and they're easily recognizable so that's why it's uh, interesting to look for examples of those in ancient art 
this is one of the first pieces I encountered in an old book in an old bookstore. It's from Clues to the Past by the Archaeological Society of New Mexico, printed in 1990, but it comes from the Pueblo culture, which existed, as far as we know, from AD 1300 to AD 1500. Quite clearly, this is a Lambiosaurus. This is an example of a Lambiosaurus. And failing that, it is one of the hadrosaurs with a crest. And it's nice that we have the people in the background that give us some uh, scale and size as a large animal. And again, if you don't believe it's a Lambiosaurus, what's the alternate identification? A mythological animal. Uh, but they did portray some very, very real animals, and then suddenly this mythological animal. Well, that's up to you. We can't make anybody drink the water. Again, we believe these are hadrosaurs. Uh, perhaps baby hadrosaurs in a nest. But uh, I think an alternate interpretation might be some kind of bird. But you notice he's got a hard crest on his head. Perhaps someone out there knows about a bird that looks like this. And of course, it could be a false identification. Crypto zoo archaeology is a probably a difficult thing to, uh, it's not a precise science, obviously. But I think, note this the shine on the back of this guy's head, you know, ceramic. But there's no indication that this is trying to portray feathers or anything like that. It's a bald, basically bald head. We think down here shows a pretty good uh, indication that it's one of the hadrosaur dinosaurs being shown here. This is from Romania. From It's a Neolithic piece. It's just the, this vase with this head of a hadrosaur. And as you can see very clearly what these two modern interpretations of this, of the um, uh, Corythosaurus, or basically in this case it's a Lambiosaurus, the shorter crest. Um, that's a pretty accurate representation of that dinosaur that was supposedly extinct 65 million years ago. Uh, I like this piece. This is from the book Picture Writing of the American Indians by Garrick Mallory. You can see that this is a Parasaur Alufus dinosaur, and the scale is provided lying on the back of one, standing on the back of one, with a bench to climb on its back. Um, you can see this full story here at this address on our blog. Again, we would say this is a hadrosaur dinosaur. It's one of the non-crested variety, like a mesiosaur or perhaps a guanodon. But you can see that there's quite a similarity between these two, again, attended by a priest. And again, this is an ancient Chimo culture, 1100 AD to 1400 AD. And this is a creature that was supposedly extinct 65 million years ago. Uh, and uh, the tail is missing. Is it lopped off, broken off, or was it bobbed? Was it something that was bobbed? You can't really say. Uh, I think our tentative identification is just a hadrosaur, and that's a meosaur.